Welcome and good morning. Thank you for joining Metropolitan Community College's Virtual Women's History Month programming. Like many national celebrations, Women's History Month began as a week long activity. This started in 1981 and continued until 1987 when Congress designated the month of March as Women's History Month to recognize the, special, the specific achievements women have made over the course of American history in a variety of fields. The 2022 national theme for Women's History Month is Providing Healing, Promoting Hope. Your microphones are silenced. Please use the chat function to send communications to moderator Barbara Velasquez. I will present your questions to our speaker after her presentation. And also, please watch the chat for a link to an online evaluation. Dr. Daisy Nelson Century is truly a modern day Renaissance woman. She is an actress, speaker, author, radio talk show host and educator. She is a teacher by trade, teaching middle school science. She holds the following degrees, a BS, an MED, and an EDD. The call of writing and acting has long echoed in her repertoire. Dr. Nelson Century has published several books, including Bell, Miss Emmeline's Little Book of Wit and Wisdom, Zach and his lucky zebra socks, and Deedle Deedle, Your House is on Fire. As an actress, Dr. Century Nelson has appeared in several independent movies in lead roles, Spiricide and Roundtable by Alpha Productions. She appeared as extras in Beloved, Sixth Sense, Trading Lanes, and 12 Monkeys. She has traveled all over the United States portraying historical characters such as Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman, Mary Fields, Phyllis Wheatley, Hatshepsut, Madam C. J. Walker, and Bessie Coleman. In her spare time, she writes, takes guitar and violin lessons, and practices karate with her grandson, Jalen. In fact, she earned her black belt three years ago. She lives in Philadelphia with her family. Please welcome Dr. Daisy Nelson Century as she presents Quilt Stories. Good morning and welcome to my Quilt Stories. Welcome, come on in, have a seat. And I say my Quilt Stories because I am going to tell you about quilts as seen through the eyes of a child. These are all things that I remembered seeing my mother sit at the kitchen table, sewing away hours, humming along. <laughs> and all of the ladies from the Quilton Bee and some of the things I remember they did. And I'm gonna share with you some of the quilts that I have here, the story behind it, and I'm gonna bring them down so that you can get a closer look. So. We're going to be doing a lot of things with quilts, and I'm hoping that you will become inspired to become a quilter yourself, or perhaps start a quilting bee. Who knows? Who knows what the future holds? Okay, we'll start with what exactly is a quilt? Well, my definition is a quilt is a covering made of small pieces sewed together either by hand or by sewing machine to put on the bed to cover to keep warm i like that definition okay and of course later on we'll discuss the different types of quilts how quilts are made um, the parts of a quilt uh, tools that quilters use and the historical context of quilting Okay, now we'll begin first with the different types of quilts that I saw my mother and the quilt and bee ladies made. Okay, now these are the quilts here. I'll start with this one on the far end. 
This one, as you can see, is made of all different types of cloth, fabrics. I'll bring it over to get a closer look. Now with this one, with this one, this is the bottom part here, the back. And this is the front part. Now I remember this part. This was a part of sort of like a spread for the bed. I remember that one. And this one was like curtains from my brother's window. Oh, I remember that. Oh gosh. And this part I remember my mother making aprons out of this one. So this is a leftover from an apron. Oh my goodness. Okay, now look at, I'm gonna put it real close. If you can see the threads, the threads going through. And I'm gonna put it on the back part. You can really see the threads. Look at this. Look at the threads going through. Wow. I'm hoping you'll be able to see that. And then, of course, she would end it all up by having a border around the edges. And all of this was done by hand. My mother would start in the middle of the quilt and come all the way down. In the middle, coming all the way down. In the middle, coming all the way down. Wow memories from these quilts. I remember that one. Now what my mother would do, she would take a piece of quilt and sew them together. Now this is the top part of the quilt. So this is a big piece here. This is the top part and she has it sewn right in the middle. So this would be the top part. Now she's gonna sew this at the uh, kitchen table. It's kind of long and big, and it will certainly get in the way. So she would often get a piece of board. Now I don't have a piece of board, but I've made something out of uh, tubings from paper towels, and my mother would get it this way. And she would roll it up. She would roll it up until she got it small enough and then she would spread it on the table. Now it's not all over the place and it's not cumbersome. So she of course would start here in the middle, going down, the middle, going down. And then she would unravel it some more, get that section until the whole thing was done. So I thought that was quite ingenious. It was quite ingenious of my mother to do that. So that's one of the things I remember her doing, sewing by herself, getting all the quilts together. And we're gonna come back later on to this and the other part of the quilt. Now this part is sort of like maybe two and a half yards, 60 inches wide, really long. Now, can you imagine right now, the fabric store is the place to go. I would never imagine going to the fabric store and being so excited. You go in the fabric store and you look at all the beautiful colors. And sometimes you touch them. You go by and touch the silk and the nylon and the rayon and the corduroy, polyester, um, the muslin, all the different types. But you don't go in there to, to buy big pieces. You go directly to the bin. That's the big uh, box or some type of big bin that all the scrap pieces are. That's where you, that's what you really go in there for. Oh, that's a quilter's paradise, I tell you. Oh, all the pieces are there. Now, you go in there and you see different pieces and you say, oh, I can use this. So you take that out. Oh, I can use this piece. Just the small pieces, you don't want big pieces. Then you said, oh yes, I can definitely use this one. And then before you know it, you have a whole armful. 
And then sometimes the fabric stores have sales on and you can buy, uh, purchase a whole bag, maybe for two or three dollars. And sometimes you come out with three bags. But then as you go through and pick out different pieces, uh, you meet other ladies there and you get to talking to them. He says, are you a quilter? They said, oh, yeah. And we talk about how we make our quilts and um, the different techniques that we can share. And sometimes we grab for the same pieces. And then we look at one another. And then we say, OK, rock, paper, scissors. Then we both have the same size. All right, one more time. Ah, rock. OK, so then, of course, when we can't settle it, we said, OK, I saw it first. You can have it. But it's such fun going to the fabric stores and getting just the small pieces, the fabrics. And then you come home and you start sewing them together and ideas come in your head. Oh, I'm going to make it this way. I'm going to make it maybe green and blue. I'm going to make the entire quilt red, white, and blue. So you think about how you're going to make the quilt and all the colors that you're going to put in. And of course, quilts are very colorful. I've never seen like an all blue quilt or an all gray quilt. No, no, no. Quilts are colorful. And quilts should always tell a story. Now, that's my take on it. Quilts should always tell a story. A story about family, just like I shared with you. It should always tell a story where these fabrics came from. You remember sitting on the couch that had this particular covering. So it should always tell stories about family, about children and their clothes, how small their clothes were when they were little. Uh, maybe you can have, some people have put their wedding dress in a quilt. So this can be passed on through the family. They have put something like when they were baptized in church, they put that in the quilt. So the quilt should always tell a story about family, friends, or special occasions. That's what I usually think about when I say a quilt. Okay, and I'm going to share this with you a little bit later on. Okay, but now, like everything, quilters always have special tools because they're specialists. They need special tools. Here are the tools of a quilter. A quilter, of course, starts out by using scissors. They need scissors, of course, to cut the threads, and of course, to cut the fabrics. So your trusty scissors. And of course, you're going to need thread. Now, not just any old thread. You're gonna need very strong thread, cotton thread. My mom always used to say a number eight or a number 10, one or the other. Number eight or number 10, strong cotton thread. And the next thing is a thimble. The thimble is used to put on the finger because sometimes when you sew, the fabric is so thick and tough that it's hard to get the needle through. So you're gonna need the thimble to push the needle through. This is a must. Do not, listen to me very well. Do not start sewing without a thimble. The fingers will be pricked and deadened by the time you get to the end, you'll have to cut the finger off. I tell you, it's gonna cause so much trouble. So I'll show you. And of course, this is the needle. I've got it on a piece of paper so that you can see maybe how big it is. It's not the tiny needles, it's the very long needle. So I'll put it this way. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, I'll take it off. Just hold it. Maybe you can see it that way. I'll just hold it. You can see how big it is. This is a very big needle. Okay, now this is a piece of cloth here. So if you put the needle through the cloth and it is stuck, so all you have to do is get your thimble and push it through, pull it out on the other end. So your thimble is very essential to sewing quilts. Okay. 
I'm going to put this back on because I don't want to lose it. Now, another very essential part is a brick or something heavy enough to hold the quilt in place. Because if it's just by yourself, you can use a quilt. Even if with other women, always use a quilt. I mean, a, some type of a brick or something heavy. And of course, if you want to be fancy, you can put a paper. You can put aluminum foil around it to make it look very fancy. And you want to just put it on the quilt so that it will keep the quilt from moving back and forth. Okay. So this is also very good. Now, some people can get very fancy things out of the store, um, weights to hold it down. But of course, you can just go on the outside and get a quilt, I'm sorry, a, a brick um, to put it on or a big can of soup that high to put it on, but my mom preferred the brick, so that's what she would use. So these are your essential tools of a quilter. And of course, a kitchen table is the best thing, or some type of table. You have to be high enough. So like all professors or teachers, okay, class, we'll review the tools very briefly. Your scissors, Say it with me, your thread, and what are the numbers of the thread? I can hear you, eight and 10, or two eights or two tens. And this, you get a prize for this one, your thimble, T-H-I-M-B-L-E, thimble. Push the needle through. And of course, and of course, this one, your needle. And of course, you need a stabilizer to hold everything in place would be your brick, your beautiful silver brick. <laughs> okay, those are the tools. Okay, so we've gone over what a quilt is, um, the tools that a quilters use. And I've shown you one of the quilts that uh, my mother made. Now, the ladies from the quilting bee, when someone got married, all the ladies from the community would come together and they would bring their tools early that morning. And my mom would have the kitchen table cleared off. And we, have the, uh, we used to have the kitchen table push up against the wall, but she would bring it in the middle of the room, put all the chairs around, and the host quilter would make coffee and homemade biscuits for the ladies. And one of the ladies, of course, would bring a cake. And they would all gather around with their tools and they would have a seat. And my mom would already have, she would already have the top part of the quilt made and the bottom part. So they would just have to put the filling in and do the sewing. Now, when all the ladies would come and then it would usually be about four to six women. So they would say, okay, you take this part, you take this part, you take this part until all the entire part of the quilt was covered. And then of course they would start from the middle and sew down. And then of course they would laugh and talk and sing. One person would start a song and then all would join in. And then sometime it was just quietness, but not for long. And after about five minutes, then they would start the gossiping. Well, did you hear about Sister Brown? Oh, I never thought. And they would go on and on gossiping. And as a little kid, I would be listening. And if my mom would see me, she would scold me and says, go outside to play. This is grown people's business, you know? So I would say, oh. So I would go outside and play, but they would just start gossiping. And after they finished gossiping, they would start singing again. And somebody says, you know what? I'm thirsty. He says, all right, let's take a break. They would take a break and have some coffee, biscuit or coffee and cake. And just take about five minutes and go right back. And in one day, they would have made two to three quilts. But because this is a wedding quilt, they would put something a little fancy on it. They would tie a ribbon in the middle. Or they would put um, different type of yarn, cloth, 
long ribbon all the way around the edges to make it fancy because this is going to be a wedding quilt. So these are your everyday quilts here, everyday winter quilts. But the, the wedding quilt had different adornments on it, ribbons and bows, and once in a while, a button, once in a while. And when they got finished, it was absolutely beautiful. So um, if you consider becoming a quilter, one of the greatest gifts that you can give anyone and one of the most precious gifts would be a quilt for their wedding. Can you imagine that? A quilt for their wedding. And if you know that person very well, get something that they wore as a child. Ask their parents something they wore as a child and surprise them. So when they open up that quilt and see their small shirt in there or small pants or small hat in that quilt, you know, they would just faint out because it's just so gorgeous, beautiful, and of course, um, it's, it's imaginative what you can do with that quilt. It's just so um, remarkable. So think about that. And if you can't sew or if you can't, if you're not a quilter, there are all kinds of quilting societies around and they would make your quilts for you. So all you have to do is dig around on Facebook and find out the quilting societies um, call the quilting museums. They know a lot of women quilters who would sew the quilt for you, but you have to notify them way in advance, maybe a year, year or two in advance and have it made and have it wrapped beautifully to give it to the wedding party. Um, they will love it forever and cherish it forever. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I have written several poems about quilts that I'm going to share with you. Here they go. I'm going to hold this one in my hand. I think I'm going to have these published uh, a little bit later on because I kind of like them myself. And I read them to a couple of people that said, oh, you should publish these quilt poems. I said, hmm, good idea. This one is, I see me in the quilt. Mixtures of colors, stripes floral and plaid, layers upon layers, sewn together with love. Years later, I recognized my favorite red cat face dress, sewn together next to curtains, chair covers, and daddy's shirt. I see all the colors. I see all the threads. I see all the squares. I see me in the quilt. Oh, I love that one. This one is called Morning. Sunrise, curtains flying in the summer breeze. Jasmine from the nearby fence penetrates through the windows. Eyes open, anticipating a day of adventures. Snuggling under my warm quilt. Ah. This one is called the wedding quilt. When you get married, my daughter, I will make you a special quilt. A quilt to cover you when you are cold. A quilt to smell, to smell the smoke from the fireplace. A quilt to remember the laughter around the fireplace. A quilt to see yourself in. A quilt to remember to remember our ancestors. A quilt to feel my hand stitching every square. A quilt to pass on to your daughter and her daughter and her daughter. Oh, love it. It's like, oh, I love it. Because you know, sometimes I write poems and it's like, what was I thinking? I don't like this. But these cool poems, I love them all. This one is called Safe, Snow Falling, Wind Howling. The moon is full, passes by between the clouds. 
monsters under my bed, ghosts scratching at the door. I'm safe under my warm quilt. Ah, quilts are always safe. I'm gonna tell you a story later on. This one is the colorful quilt. A quilt has everything, pieces, threads, shapes, designs, stories, songs, love, laughter, history, and colors, lots of colors, my colorful quilts. This one is called Songs Made the Quilt. Ladies of the quilt and bee gathered around the kitchen table, tools in hand, starting from the middle, coming down row after row. Someone starts to sing, all chime in, impromptu, a call and response. One song leads into another. Where did the time go? The quilt is finished. This one is called Heavy Quilts. My mother called Heavy Quilts Dickies. I don't know why she called them that. She perhaps told me, but I probably have forgotten over the years. The quilts were so heavy that when she put them on us at night, we couldn't even turn over. They were so heavy. So if we were on our backs, we stayed on our backs all night. If we were on our side, we stayed on our side all night. If we were on our stomach, we stayed on our stomach all night because the quilts were so heavy. So this one is called heavy quilts. Some quilts are lightweight. Some quilts are medium weight. Some quilts are heavy. Heavy enough to keep the body warm long after the chimney logs burn out. Heavy enough to restrain body movement. Heavy enough to wrap you in love. Oh, I love the heavy ones. This one is by far, and this is the last one, my favorite one. It's called The Home Place. When I get homesick, I think I wrote this when I was homesick one time. The home place. When I long for the home place, I simply wrap a quilt around me. And I remember, I smile, and I smell. I smell the smoke from the fireplace still in the quilt in my imagination, of course. I can smell the sweet potato pie baking in the oven. I can hear the laughter of us running in the yard, barefoot on the cold morning dew grass. I can feel mama's love, mama's love all around me in every color, in every square, in every stitch. I am at the home place. I am at the home place once again. Oh, when I get in the quilt, I'm here. This one gets me every time. So whenever I wanna go home, I simply wrap the quilt around me and I go there. Oh, oh that gets me every time it's like, oh, oh. Okay. After my poems and quilt stories. Now, there are different kinds of quilts. Um, the first one, of course, are patch quilts like these. Of course, they're made out of patch, patch cloth. You can see the patches here, patches of different colors. So these are the patch quilts. And then there are some, I'll put it very close so that you can see. There are some that are very fancy that are sewn by the machine. These are picture quilts. You will simply get different pictures of uh, different objects, uh, animals, you can get um, trees, you can get um, teddy bears, hats. And of course you would sew them together. So these are picture quilts sewn together. Okay. And another kind of quilt, they are called crazy quilts. Now, I've seen one in the museum. Crazy quilts, of course, is just what it says. 
It has hats. Um, it's got zippers. It's got buttons. It's got, um, what else does it have on there? I've seen some with feathers on, and they're simply tied on to the top of the quilt. So it's a crazy quilt because it has everything that you can imagine on there. And those are mostly for displays in museums. And then there's another quilt called applique quilt. Um, you would simply get an applique and put it on the quilt and sew it around the applique. And of course, take the cut all the extra thread away. So as different generations go on, as different cultures go on, they will simply add another type of quilt. So the quilting um, has really changed over the years from, they mentioned the first quilt was uh, probably about 5,000 years old. So it has certainly changed in 5,000 years. Um, and it said this one was on Osiris. They found uh, a marble statue um, of Osiris in the 1900s, and it's in the British Museum. And he appeared to be wearing some type of cloak that appeared to be quilted. So they're saying that's perhaps the first one, um, of course, in Egypt. So over the years, quilting have really, really, really changed. Then again, they remain the same, either hand sewn, but of course, the machine now has added a new dimension. They can, of course, just flick out a quilt in uh, less than an hour, maybe. Reverend, it took my mother several hours, maybe a couple of days to make one quilt. But the difference is, as we mentioned, the quickness or the love that goes into each one, the love that goes into each one. So those are the different quilts that um, have changed over the years. Now, a quilt has three main parts. Okay, I've shown you this one. This is like the top. This is the top, okay? That's one of the top quilts. This one is very clear. This one could be the bottom part of a quilt. So one thing about making patch quilts, you can make the bottom out of any part you like. Now, some people use the muslin cloth to um, put it in. Some people use a cloth like this, the muslin cloth to make their bottom out of. You can use this if you like. Okay, so you can use this as your bottom part, the muslin cloth. Okay. Or you could use this one, like I had before, the colorful one. Your choice, your quilt, no rules, nothing set in stone, so you can make your own rules. But it must have a bottom. So that's in place, that's a rule. So a quilt has a bottom. And a quilt has a top. Now, my mother started this one, but she's not here with us anymore. So I've got to finish this quilt. And this is absolutely beautiful. See, she sewed the ends around. So this is definitely going to be a top. This is beautiful. I love it. So this looks like maybe a full size quilt here. So you have your full size quilt, your queen size, and then of course your king size quilt. So this is a top, definitely a top. And I've got to get cracking. I've got to finish this quilt. And here's another piece that could be a top. Oh, this one is colorful. It has everything. Letters of the alphabets. It has flowers. Oops, try it this way. Let us look the alphabets. It has flowers. It has bows. It has stripes. So this one is very colorful and this is definitely a top, the top of a quilt. So I've shown you several tops and one bottom, the muslin bottom or the pink bottom. So quilt has three parts top, bottom, then there's the middle part. The middle part is called the batting. Now today, of course, they use cotton, sponges, but 
when my mom, when they made quilts, they used small fabrics, the kind that we get out of the bin at the fabric store. Oh, they would use these, the small cotton ones. And they, of course, would simply just put them in, spread them all out, put the bottom down first. Oh, and this is my little quilt that I'm going to make for you later on. This is the bottom of my quilt. And then I'm going to put all the little scraps in the middle. This gives it a little weight and it gives it a little snuggle in the winter time. And it's very, very warm and comforting. And this is my top. I'm going to put it close because I started making this out of summer camp. We gave all the kids one small square of cloth. They put their own design in it and they could put their names and they can put the date or a favorite quote and then we'll sew it all together. So teachers, if you're listening with your class, you can make one of these. It can be a year project because it'll take a long time with kids uh, with the curriculum and you don't have time after school. So this will take a long time. So it could be introduced in September and hopefully by Christmas or the new year, you might be finished or by the end of the year. And you can have it on display in the, uh, the hallway. You can give it to a museum, um, a senior center home. Um, so there are a lot of places you can make your peace quilt, your friendship quilt, your love quilt, and give it to someone. So this is my top of my quilt. So you've seen the bottom part of my quilt right here. You've seen the middle part right here. And you've seen the top part. So I'm going to put it all together. Now, because of time, I'm going to, I'm not going to sew it because it will take a long time. I'm going to simply staple it around the edges and um, so that you can see <clears throat> the whole thing. So first I'm going to start with, I'm going to put the, the edge around it. And I'm trying to go as fast as I possibly can. Okay, so normally, of course, you would sew this, of course, with your tools. But because of time, I'm going to go really fast. And of course, while you are quilting, you always <clears throat> have, a <clears throat> have a hum in your voice. You can just hum away. <laughs> I'm going to put my trusty brick down here so that you can see. I'm going to fold this around to make an edge. Now I could have sewn it together, but I wanted you to see the top, bottom, and the middle part of my quilt. So I didn't sew it. So I said, now how am I going to do this? I just can't show you what I've made. So I decided just to wait and of course to staple it as we go along. <laughs> Did anyone bring coffee? Did anyone bring coffee or homemade biscuits or cakes? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, no one brought coffee or cakes? Oh. <laughs> Okay, I'm getting around. Ah, oh, technology. Technology, I tell you. But you know what? I think I will perhaps never make a quilt on, uh, with um, the sewing machine because I think it will take, now this is just my take on it. It will take away the quilt in itself, the love, the joy, the camaraderie. Um, it will take away everything that the quilt is. Now I'm going to put some of the, so we can get the batten down because you have to get the batten down just a little bit. So I'm going to go as far as I can and try to get them in. 
far as I can to get them in. Far as I can to get them in. Far as I can to get them in. Okay. My little quilt is done. Oh, look at this. So you can imagine if I had taken my time to sew, I would start from here and go all the way down here, go all the way down here, all the way down. And then when you're done with the quilt, then you would fold the edges in for your hem. So here's the back part, the front part, and all those little pieces are inside. Now, a great idea to start with quilting is to make um, placeholders, placemat for your table. So you can imagine having four um, quilted placemats at your table, colorful ones. Oh, when you have guests, that would be like the talk. That would be like the talk of the dinner. Like, how did you make these beautiful cloth table mats? So you can start small and then gradually get bigger to maybe the size of a, a kid's crib. And then of course, get into your full size, your queen size, and then of course your king size. But yeah, start with um, placemats. They would be great. Yeah, I like my little crib. I have an idea. I think I'm gonna make me a set of placemats. Cause I have the like the Afrocentric cloth at the back. Oh, I've got an idea. I'm gonna make Afrocentric placemats. Yes. And maybe I'll make the fancy ones with buttons on and um, ribbons. Also, oh, the possibilities are endless, all the things you can add to it. Once you know the basics, you can add to it. And then you can start your own quilts. Give your quilt a name, you know? So we already have the patchwork, we have the crazy quilts, we have the quilt art, the applique. So now you can start a new train of quilts. And that's the way it goes. Every uh, decade, every century will start something new. Every um, ethnic group, every culture would start their own quilt. Um, no one is to say who owns the quilt, who made the first one. The first one is not here. There are no remnants of it. All cultures will claim the quilt. I will claim my mother's quilt and her mother and her mother taught her from Africa, someone from uh, Europe. The European country would say, my mother taught me this and pass it on. The Appalachian women would say, my mother taught me this and pass it on. So we all claim the quilt. And the good thing is we can all share it together and it's all a worthwhile project. And we've all come together to share our quilts. The quilts are all in the different museums. They are um, in books, stories have been written about them. And of course, um, documentaries have been written about them. So we all claim the quilt. That's it. We all claim the quilt. Okay. So now I've done uh, the parts of the quilt. Now, just to recap, uh, recap very briefly. Now I'm going to show you this one. This one. Oh, this one is a heavy quilt. This is the one I've been telling you about. Oh, I, I wish you, this one is heavy. Whoa, wow. Ah, believe me, when I, I'm straining with this quilt. It weighs at least about 10 pounds. This is a dicky. My mother used to call the heavy one. This is definitely a dicky here. Oh, gosh. And look at the stitch work on here. I'm putting it close. I think I'm hoping you'll be able to see the stitch work. I'll put the, the blue one. Maybe you can see. Ah, you can see the stitch work on there. The stitch work going across. Oh, oh yeah, this is definitely heavy. And you can feel the inner batten inside. You can feel the different uh, layers of cloth and fabrics inside that's sewn in, inside. 
Whoa, yeah, this one is definitely a dicky. I'm gonna put this one down here. And this last one I'm gonna share with you. Uh, this one is equally as heavy. Oh my. Yeah, this one is equally as heavy. This one has a lot of the patch. I love to show the patches on this one. And you can see all the thread work. Look at all the thread. Oh, look at all the thread work there. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's some yellow. I like this one. This has some color. So as I told you before, you could use any part to make the, the bottom part if you don't have the muslin part. I do have some that has the muslin part, but most of them are colorful. And these are all things left over in our house. Chair covers, curtains, clothes, skirts, tops. These are all in our quilts. Oh, ah, here we go. There are some more colors. So she was quite uh, like a chess maker. She has a part that says, ah, this is a, a long part. Now, what am I going to find to fit into this? This is, won't fit into the square. But somehow she would make the long piece fit in with the square. So very, very clever, very smart. Oh, so I can put this back on. Oh, ha, this is heavy. Oh, oh. Ah, wow. That is heavy. Okay, I'm going to just put the small ones up. The other ones are too heavy. Okay, let me put this back up. Right. I feel like the ladies in the fabric store that said, you want to see something in um, corduroy? Come and look this way. You want to see something in uh, plaid? You know, that kind of thing. Okay, so We've gone over pretty much the basics of quilting. And what I want to, I hope that you got inspired to want to become a quilter. Uh, you know, the men have their, their Friday and Saturday poker nights. You can have your Friday and Saturday quilting nights. Just get two, three friends together. Says, okay, let's try something. Do you know how to quilt? No. Do you know how to quilt? No. But let's just try. We know we have, we need a bottom middle and we need a top and we sew it by hand. So let's just make something and let's see how it becomes. And you can give yourself names like uh, Quilton, um, Quilton Mamas or Quilton Queens. Um, so you can give yourself fancy Quilton names, but quilt must be in there, you know, um, that kind of thing. Uh, and you never know um, how far this will lead to and what it will lead to. Pretty soon you will be making quilts that you can donate to the homeless. You can donate to um, women and family in shelters. You can donate to um, children who are very sick and they just need a small one just to keep them like their comfort zone, you know? Um, and you can give them, of course, to local museums, but it will, and also the third world countries. Um, you can make quilts to give away to keep people warm. And uh, they will be so appreciative and it will make you feel better. It will make you feel better because I'm, I'm a part of uh, a, a quilting like that. And when you see someone enjoy it, it makes you feel better and you want to make more to make more to give more to people. So I believe I covered everything that I wanted to talk about today um, in my quilting journey. And I just wanted to share some things with you. So um i guess that will end my quilting spot for now um thank you very much and i'll entertain any questions that you might have hey thank you so much thank I you really appreciate your diverse presentation that took us you know around uh the life your life with quilt mm -hmm. and um bringing many memories to us uh, one question, do you have in your memories as a child through adulthood, a most meaningful quilt? Uh, yes, and I don't have that quilt with me. 
the quilt with the red cat face. I had a dress. It was a red flare dress that had uh, colorful cat faces all over it. And I would spin around and that cat face dress would just flare in the breeze. That, and it was in a quilt, but I don't have it. So I'll have to check with my sisters to see if they have it. Because that was my, and that will be my favorite quilt, my cat face dress. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I think we all well, remember matter, something we loved, and that would be such a nice way to have it, right? Yes. And you know what? I'm writing a book called The Girl in the Cat Face Dress. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So we have um, a comment. It's so interesting that the heavy quilts may have led to the weighted blanket. I'm amazed at how relaxing quilting is. Oh. And yeah. while you were talking about the Dickies, I was trying to find out on the internet if there was any history with Dickies and quilts. And the only thing I could come up with is, I wonder if, is there any chance she used um, the Dickie, um, the Dickey product that was created for people to, to use as workwear, a heavy, heavy, um, fabric like dickies were made for men generally men workers I don't know yeah I don't know um yeah I, I'm I'm pretty sure she told me where she got that word from but I can't remember but she called all the big heavy cooks dickies I remember distinctly yeah it was really beautiful to listen to the the quilting bee that you experienced as a child and um was your mother making quilts all the time or were these just beautiful moments that you remember just beautiful moments um you know just sometimes she would sew not all the time yeah yeah all right so i want to thank everybody we're coming close to the midday hour Thank you for your attentions. Thank you for um, everyone who shared such um, beautiful visuals when you would tell your stories. I was watching Daisy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Daisy, did you have anything you wanted to share with the audience as we end? Um, it's that, um, that I'm a cruel to myself. Um, and I, I learned to quilt and I remembered from my mother how to um, to quilt and also to that um, you can go to my website sometimes if perhaps you want to even contact me and we could dialogue and I can walk you through it. Um, Wonderful. <laughs> like, a doctor, like a doctor. Um, so you can go to www.daisycentry.com. Um, and call me up and says, I'm from the Metropolitan uh, Community College uh, Quilt Group, and I have this question. And I'll, I'll be more than happy to um, get you started. You can even Zoom and you can show me what you have. And I will say, okay, now, you know, go to the left here or go to the right here now, you know, tuck this in, that kind of thing. So I'll be more than happy to do that. So once again, www.daisycentury.com. And it has my phone number and email. Excellent. I put that in the um, chat if anybody wants to look there. All right. So can we move, please? I think Brian is with us. and want to thank you, Brian, for helping us with technology. I do have in the chat the online evaluation. And we'll really appreciate your feedback. Um, so thank you for completing that. Thank you for to Teresa for keeping our evaluations in order. And then the final slide tells of our next program, and that is this evening. So it's a busy day at Metro, as it often is. We will be watching a documentary online, so you just need to connect. But this time, you do need to register. And I'm putting in the chat that registration link, so it might be simple for you to just click on it. This is about Cesar Chavez. And we're looking forward to having 
a discussion led by the director, Richard Ray Perez, who is also the executive director of the International Documentary Association, after we watch Cesar's Last Fast. So thank you, everybody. I look forward to seeing you. Hope you can connect with us tonight. Have a great day. And Daisy, Daisy, thank you. You have given us a lot of um, joy. And we love your humor as you work through the presentation, too. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you so much. And thank you, uh, Metropolitan, for your invite. Thank you so much. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>